Did you know that you can dynamically control what shows up in a dropdown pulled directly from your integrations? There are three different ways of getting those options. Number one, you can manually add those options. Number two, you can dynamically pull from your integration and list everything there. And number three, of course, you can generate a filtered list using an options generator. So since many of you are already using the add new client to Roost crate, we'll go in and look at the form to see an example of the manual and the dynamic option before we get into the options generator. All right, so I've jumped into Roost and I've opened up the add new client to Roost form. For a good manual example, let's scroll all the way down to the primary identifier field. So I'm gonna come down here to my org variable section and you'll see a number of drop downs. but if I click on the primary identity provider here, I can scroll scroll down, I can see that dynamic options is not selected and I have a number of options here. First, you have the option label. Again, this is basically just what shows up in the actual form. So we can choose from Azure Active Directory, on-prem AD or Jump Cloud. And of course we have those mapped to the values or the variables that we can use in a workflow with your Azure AD on-prem and Jump Cloud here. So without getting into all the details of the automation itself, what this essentially allows you to do is to say something like, if Azure AD is selected, do this. If on-prem, do something else. If Jump Cloud is selected, then do something else. This is a great example of using the manual option because there aren't any other options that you can choose from at this point. So this isn't a field that requires a lot of attention. Next, let's talk about the first level of our dynamic options. So if I scroll back up to the RMM section and let's select the Ninja RMM organization here, this is another dropdown field and you will see that dynamic options is selected. Now workflow generated is not. So what this is doing is this is taking that middle route that I talked about in the beginning of the video. Essentially, I'm going to my Ninja RMM integration and I'm pulling the options here. I don't need to filter it out or do any of those kinds of things. I just need the options that exist. So I have dynamic options selected here and the integration is selected Ninja RMM and the resource specifically that I'm looking for are the organizations. I could of course choose any other resources within Ninja RMM, but organizations is what I'm looking for for this particular form. So again, if you're looking to have dynamic options, but you just want to pull from a resource in any of your integrations, this is the way. However, what it does not allow you to do is say something like, I only want these types of organizations. So let's take a look at another example. I'm gonna be looking at the Emibot install ad hoc software form. This comes from the install ad hoc software crate that you can find on the marketplace. And what this crate allows you to do is pick a device and a piece of software and install it on said device and then create or update a ticket. So in this form, we have three dropdown options. We have the ticket number, software list, and the choose device option. And in this particular form, all three dropdowns have option generators. So if I click on ticket number, for example, I'll see dynamic options, workflow generated, and a workflow that is attached. Remember, an options generator is just a special type of workflow used to filter information that you're getting from an integration. Now, something really important to note here, some of you are gonna be coming to the platform just making use of crates in the beginning, and that's awesome. There are some cases where you need to understand why a form dropdown is not filling out, and it's always good to look for an options generator attached and go to that options generator and check the results there. So I'm gonna start by opening up the Emibot list computers options generator, and then we'll take a look at this. So what this is doing is it's checking for a client ID for someone filling out this form. If their tenant ID is specified, then it's going to, you guessed it, list computers for that tenant. And if the tenant is not identified, it will just give you a list of computers. Now this is obviously a workflow, but what makes this an options generator? There's actually two things that we need to set up an options generator or identify if it's an options generator. First, I can come up to the configure workflow settings and you'll see the workflow type. Like I said, there are two types of workflows in Roost. There's a standard workflow and an options generator. And in the actual workflow configuration, you'll see that here. Next, in order for my form to actually recognize the outputted options from this options generator, it's important that I come down here and in the output configuration, I have a field named options with ctx.options set. What this is essentially doing is it's allowing the form to recognize that when this workflow runs, whatever output you get from it become your options that it can show in a field. I can actually see this in the workflow as well. If I click on the Emibot list computer actions transition, where it says on success, I will see that there is a data alias set to 
options. This is connected to that output configuration. And this is where it can get a little bit complicated if you're not familiar with Jinja, but hang in there. If I click on this source field here, it's gonna open up a pretty big editor. I'll expand it here. But what this is essentially saying in the data alias is this variable named options is connected to this Jinja filter. And what this is essentially doing is it's taking the results of the workflow, i.e. listing computers, and determining what specific information shows up in our options. So that was a lot. In short, the special type of workflow, regardless of the input, your output always needs to be called options. And Jinja is gonna be the language that you use to actually filter out your options. When it's all said and done, the way this is going to work is you can choose from an existing ticket or leave it blank if there's no ticket that exists. Choose the software environment, whether local or global, and then you're simply choosing which software from that list is going to show up on which device. And the options generators will show you the tickets, the software list, and the computers. And here's a nifty trick for you. If you're working with an unsynced workflow and you're not quite sure what the options generator is doing, you can use RoboRoosty. If you want to know more about how to use RoboRoosty, you can check out this video. Video. Hope this was helpful for everybody, and I'll see you all in the next one.